Hey Big Eats, we've got a special and very niche treat for you today. As you may remember, a couple of weeks ago we did a live cask broadcast with the amazing Five Points Brewery. And this week we're releasing a little portion of that in which we spent a day exploring the style of Best Bitter and chatting to Greg, the head brewer at Five Points, about their beer best, which is a Fuggle and Maris Otter laden, absolute juicy, bitter beauty of a beer. And today we talked to him about how he made it and get some seriously sexy slow-mo uh, of those hops going in. Cheers. East London's Five Points have never been the trendiest of breweries, but drinking around the capital, you'll find their beer in all the best bars and bottle shops. That's because while their focus on West Coast and classic British styles doesn't win them much geeky hype, it does mean that they make exactly the kind of beer that people love to drink on a daily basis. Every one of their beers, and I include the barley wine in this, is the kind you want to drink by the pint all night long. Just over two years ago, they released the least trendy beer style of all, a Best Bitter. But something strange happened. It did get hype. Brad and I found ourselves constantly back at their pub, The Pembury, downing pints of it. Then two summers ago, we ended up in the hop fields of Kent, trying to find the source of its prickly bramble flavour. And finally, during the 2020 summer lockdown, I craved it so much, I installed my own cask line at home and homebrewed my own version. Recently, we finally got to sit down with Greg and geek out about this amazing beer, and also see their new brewery in Taproom, just down the road from where it all started the Five Points Junction in Hackney. So I'm here with Greg, head brewer of Five Points. Um, now let's start by addressing the fact that last time we came to visit Five Points, it was a different place. That's right, yeah. <laughs> so where are we now? Yeah, so we um, took the opportunity recently to relocate from our existing site where it all started up by Hackney Downs to our, um, what has been our warehouse and is now our warehouse and brewery here right. on Mare Street. So you've brought it all under, all under one roof? We brought it all under one roof, yeah, exactly. So we were, I mean, not only with the way things are in the industry at the moment, having two rents um, was expensive, but also we were spending a for small fortune and having to, you know, just the shunting of ingredients and product backwards and forwards between the two sites is a, an inefficiency. Yeah, absolutely. And so we're now sat in what is about to become your outdoor tap room as That's well. That's right, yeah. So you can serve directly from, you know, almost from the from the tanks almost to, yeah, to people just right. here in this lovely, lovely space. Um, so this morning, Brad and I have been watching you brew probably our favorite five mm. points <laughs> beer. It is like choosing between your children, uh, which is best. That's right. Um, and when, I remember when this came out, I was absolutely fascinated because you were one of the first sort of modern breweries to come out with a, a proper best bitter. And since then, there's been a bit of a renaissance. So where'd it come from? Yeah, so um, it's a style that we've, we've always sort of wanted to do it's a style that ed and i both grew up drinking you know there's the traditional british ales we love a, a bit of history and the heritage the british brewing heritage as it is um and i think it was this sort of time 2019 that we first launched the beer um and we actually launched it up in leeds at the same time hop city was on which was a bit sort of felt a bit foolish at the time well like <laughs> it could have IPA been foolish. Heads coming in exactly the some of the then. best brewers in the world who specialize in you know massively hopped delicious beers and we're turning up with a sort of but cask I, of fuggle. I bet they'd have been all over it for something a little bit different. Your palates get tired at a festival that's like right. that. That's yeah. right, um, And also, of course, fuggle, which is the hop that's in this, was, you know, most of the American hops were bred from that. Yeah. So it's like a return, return to the roots. I'm sure that's what you were saying. <laughs> yeah. Swinging a pint around. Um, so I'd love to hear about more about the recipe of this beer. I guess we should probably start with the malt because that's one of the big unsung heroes, I think, of, of particularly British traditional British brew. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, like the, the malt, this sort of style of beer, it's all about how the ingredients come together and the, the malt is as crucial a part as the hops itself. Um, we use a premium heritage barley variety called Maris Otter, which makes up the majority of our base malt for all of our beers, but particularly shines in a beer like Best. Um, we also use a small amount of amber malt, crystal and wheat malt as well. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of what's giving us a bit of colour and also a bit of, a bit of body, I guess. Yeah, exactly. As well. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then you've layered like an absolute ton of fuggle onto this. Yeah. It feels like all Five Points beers have a, an assertive level of bitterness, whether it's a Pilsner or a Bitter or an IPA. Yeah. That's something 
Yeah, I mean, that's how it's we like to drink our beers. Right, yeah, yeah, exactly. To me, that's that's sort of part of the drinkability and the sort of want to, wanting to go back and, and have drink more of it mm. um, is that bitterness. And it is, it, it is apparent in this this as well. Um, yeah, we use um, more fuggle in this by weight than we do many of our sort of American style beers. Wow. Like in, in the in the boil, I in guess. In the boil, yeah, there's exactly. No, there's no dry, no dry help on yeah. this. Yeah. 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 Um, so t tell me about fuggle as a hop because I think British hops have a bit of a reputation for being maybe a bit dull or earthy or, or twiggy is the word that people use, but there's like none of that in this beer whatsoever. Yeah, so I mean, I think part of that comes down to where we source our hops from, to the provenance of it. We work with a farm in Kent called Hukins Hops, a fifth generation hop farm, and they regularly win awards for their hops and their sort of passion for quality is, is quite apparent. Mm -hmm. um, so that obviously really helps as well. But I think it's, it's partly to do with how hops have been used historically in bitters. They were just sort of like a, almost a bit of an afterthought. They were there to provide a bit of bitterness. And preserve, uh, preserve, and preserve it as the well. Beer, yeah, of course, but not, not much sort of aroma or flavor. Whereas, you know, certainly the way we've approached this beer with, you know, big quantities of the hop has sort of, I think, helped make the beer for us. Mm -hmm. It makes it much more interesting. And there's, there's that f slightly floral, minty aroma that comes across. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, and then that's also backed, so yeast is, when I think of bitters, I often think of a sort of residual sweetness and, and juiciness that, um, that comes from the yeast and also is pre present in other styles that have used yeast like that, yeah. like New England IPA. So what, is it a classic British yeast in this one as well? It is, yeah. We actually trialled three different yeasts before we settled on one on a sort of very small pilot scale. Um, and the one we ended up settling on is a White Lab strain called WLP13. Um, and it is a historical British strain, which gives it a sort of slightly oaky character, which yeah. I think fits in with the rest of the beer. It's really interesting because that, there, there is an oaky character to that, and I'd always assumed that that was the woodier element of Fuggle, when it feels yeah. like you don't know what flavour is coming from which ingredient with this beer, which is yeah. the symbol of a balanced, you know, yeah, synergic. integrated. <laughs> there, you go. there you go. Not a very crafty <laughs> word, but I like it. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's an absolutely beautiful beer and it, it always kind of boggles my mind as to how this went out of style. Yeah. Um, like it, it was, you know, it was called bitter because it was more bitter than the, the ales and the beers of, of the, what would be seven, 18th century, 19th century. And today, you know, you can have a really high hot version, but it still retains that incredible balance if you're using those British hops. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a, a big fan of, of this t style of beer, if it brewed well. I think part of the downfall of it was, you know, not necessarily great brewing techniques. I mean, there's a certain point, probably not that long ago, where every brewery had to have a best bitter mm. and, you know, not necessarily well thought out or, or um, delivered. But then again, there's the sort of the, the sellership that comes into sort of keeping these beers in good condition, because the majority of them are in cask, which, you know, requires a level of sort of knowledge and dedication to keep that beer pouring as it should. Yeah. So until the, the COVID crisis happened, it was only available on cast. That's right. Yeah. 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 Um, but you've now got a, a bottled version. We have a bottled out. version that is about to launch and we've been doing the um, mini casks as well. Yeah. So tell me about the bottled version because, you know, something that's really special about cask is the, the, the body and the mouth feel and the huge freshness, which you obviously don't get from a bottle. Have you made adjustments to anything to, to um, make it suitable? Yeah, so we're, we're, we're mostly focusing those adjustments around the carbonation level and just trying to ensure that the um, it's not going to be as highly carbonated as our other um, bottled or canned products. We're going to keep it slightly softer and rounder carbonation to sort of be more in line with what you'd expect from a cask pint. Yeah. And the mini cask, is that just the same as the, the cask version? It's as close the as The mini cask is, yeah, it's basically, it's, it's as close as you can get to drinking a pint of best in a pub, but at home. So yeah, until the pubs can open again, this is the best we can do, but you know, there is hope, hope springing eternal and possibly coming soon. Um, but are these gonna continue afterwards? Yeah, I think we'll continue to do them. Okay, They've been great. popular. So you can have them on cask, mini cask, and in bottle for when the pubs open. That's a very exciting prospect. Uh, also remember that every sort of September, October, the wet hop versions right. yep. of the best come out. And we did a video about that last year. Uh, so at the end of this video, we'll show you that video and you can click on that to watch that. Otherwise, um, as always, thanks for having us, Greg. You're welcome. Cheers. Cheers.